Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Michelle Chartier and I'm a dentist here in Atlanta, Georgia. We were talking a little bit at the start of my YouTube channel about uh, is how much does it cost to become a dentist and I was going to share with you how to make that more affordable but today I think we need to uh, adjust our thoughts just because of what's going on in the country and the world really about coronavirus. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about is dentistry safe? So as a dentist, do I feel safe during um, viral outbreaks or pandemics, et cetera, et cetera? And then also as a patient and you're going to the dentist, is that going to be safe? So let me just share with you what I personally do in my office and a little background about um, some of the things that we use, personal protective wear, um, barrier use, cleaning practices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, sterilization clearly. So um, join me, I'm gonna try to break it down and really easy to understand. So this might be below what you understand or know. This is for the common public, this is for my patients, this is for pre-dental students who might be concerned about going into dentistry now. Join me. <laughs> Let's have some fun with this. I'm going to uh, model some personal protective equipment or PPE and as is my hygienist, Rebecca. I got her in on the action as well. So uh, I hope this is helpful to you and um, when you're done, you feel a little bit more knowledgeable and at ease. So let's get right into this. What is a virus? There's a lot of misinformation and if you took an entry level bi biology class, you would know that a virus is a microscopic infectious agent that replicates only inside of living cells of a organism, a host as in. So basically there might be a virus right on this table and it is not living until I touch the table surface, scrape up that virus cell or virion and stick it in my mouth and it goes into my body and starts replicating within my own host cells. That is how the coronavirus works as far as we know today. Also, what we know about uh, coronavirus is it's an aerosol, meaning it has to be transmitted with um, sneezing, coughing, that sort of thing. And we've also found that those type of aerosols are projected about six feet, hence the reason why we have that spacing, you know, personal spacing of six feet right now. So that if somebody was to sneeze, that aerosol of the sneeze could travel six feet. Now, does that mean that you're going to get it because you're near somebody closer, like four feet or whatever? Probably not, but like why take a chance? So that's how things work in the world and we're trying to be so careful. So I suggest you do that as well. So as you can figure, I'm a dentist. I create aerosols as do my hygienists, meaning my patients come in, we're working with saliva. So why am I not scared as a dentist? That's a really good question because I get asked it all the time. The fun thing about being um, a child in dental school in the 1990s is we had the AIDS epidemic. So my dental school, uh, I don't know, premier <laughs> was really about uh, the AIDS epidemic. We didn't really understand it. We didn't know how it was transmitted. We just knew that were, there were a lot of people dying of some really strange diseases. So we weren't sure what we needed to do to protect ourselves. So we were doing everything possible um, to protect ourselves. And since that's how I entered this profession, I have continued those practices from then on out. So we kind of have a saying in my office is, you don't know who's infected, so treat everyone as though they're infected with something that could potentially kill you. And that sounds quite uh, outlandish, but now that we're in this times with coronavirus, maybe it doesn't seem so overreactive after all. So not to make my patients feel dirty or you know, like they have you know, disease ridden or what have you, but it really is the fact that a lot of people are carriers of diseases that don't realize that they're carriers. So it's always been my uh, vision in my office to treat everybody as though they're infectious with something. Let's just go into each item that my team wears and you might even wanna know what you can do to wear or what have you to keep yourself safe in today's day and times. Number one, 
washing your hands. We've talked about this so much. Uh, the 20 second wash your hands, there's videos on how to do it effectively. Washing your hand prevents you from touching a surface and sticking that surface contaminants into your mouth. The same goes with my patients. Unless they lick me, which would be odd, uh, they're not going to get cross-contaminated with what I have on my person. Now, I do have a lot of disposable things that I'm wearing in between patients, but I'm not going to cross-contaminate my patients. Let's just start, too, with some information about what we know right now about coronavirus. So as dentists, we've learned that hydrogen peroxide, just straight up hydrogen peroxide, you get this at any type of pharmacy, over the counter, um, you just pick up the hydrogen peroxide and if you gargle with it for 30 seconds and spit out the excess, you have uh, reduced greatly the likelihood of cross-contaminating others. So we pretty much have this in my office and we have our patients pre-rinse quite often with these if we suspect any source of infection in our patients. And probably right now would be a good time to just do it as a precaution. So hydrogen peroxide. Second on that list of precautions that we take, you might notice that my hair is tied back. So I don't have any hair in my field of where I'm working. Uh, that doesn't mean that some aerosol might go up and over and into my hair, but typically I don't wear hair coverage at this time and that might change uh, as the world progresses into new uh, viruses and things like and bacteria and whatnot. So right now, hair pulled back and uh, away from the face. The next thing that I use is eye protection. In my case, I use something called loops. So you will see, here they are. And I know you think that I look really cute with them on, but uh, basically it is protecting my eyes from any aerosols entering my eyeballs. So you'll also see on the side, there's little uh, shields on the side so that the aerosol doesn't get into the side of my eyes. And um, it also is adapted pretty closely to my brows. So there's nothing going up and over. So this is one form of eye protection. I'm going to also link right now a picture of my hygienist, Rebecca. She wears a face shield. The face shield is a mask and a shield that uh, is one unit. And then she wears um, glasses or she could wear safety goggles as well, whatever you prefer, underneath the face shield. So she has uh, ample protection from prevention of any droplets or aerosols going in her nose, mouth, or eyes. <laughs> Speaking of mask, so we know about the face shield mask combination, there are a few different kinds of masks available today. This is the simplest and the lowest protection for um, aerosol transmission. So you may have seen these before. You simply put it on, squeeze the nose bridge so that you have a nice seal, pull it under your chin, and tamp it down to your face so there's not big bags on this size. And this is the ear loop face mask. Very simple and probably the lowest protection of them all. Now, quite frankly, when I'm working on patients, there's not big you know, droplets of saliva going into my face area because of the um, suction that we use in the office, but I clearly would not, after treating a patient, I'm not gonna be touching this and touching my face and things like that, because we know that this could be a contaminated surface. On to the next type of mask or protective mouthwear. So this is what we call the cone mask. This is a next layer of protection from the ear loop uh, mask. So basically, same thing, you're gonna place it over your head you're gonna pinch the nose and try to make it so that there's a good seal around your mouth and your nose. This actually is a little bit harder to wear long-term. You will feel like you're having difficulty breathing because it becomes quite uh, steamy underneath inside of here, but for protection purposes, it's worth wearing.
The third level of protection is the N95 mask. I will link that, a picture of that right here. I don't have any N95 masks. Uh, the medical profession is very low on those right now, and so we have been asked not to indulge ourselves in such um, masks until the uh, there's some additional supplies coming for the medical profession to utilize. So I'll just show you a picture. Now I don't use N95 masks currently, but that might just change. The next thing that you'll see me wearing is my coat. Basically my coat is long sleeve and also long, it goes down to my knees. It snaps up in the front and it comes up to my neck. When I'm wearing my coat, um, I, any type of um, splash or aerosol is typically in this area, so I don't touch this part of my body during a daily basis, and when I go to lunch, I take this coat off and I don't exit the building with, that, with it on. And the same goes for my team. My team wears, let's bring Rebecca's picture back up right here, and you'll see that she too wears uh, a clinic coat that goes down to her hips. So she has ample coverage for any type of aerosol splash. And she also wears scrub pants, which can be easily laundered. Uh, at the end of the day, we simply unsnap from the bottom where the aerosols typically don't uh, touch and put it into our washer dryer that we have here on site. So laundry is done on site. We don't leave with our dirty coats and coverings. Okay, another thing that we do at the office is we cover everything with barriers and we disinfect and also we autoclave. I'm going to stop here with personal protective equipment that I've shared with you today. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you know that we're doing everything we can to make your experience in our office very safe. And if you have any other questions about personal protective equipment, please feel free to ask. And uh, I'm going to share with you some sterilization and barriers and other things in our next video. Keep smiling. Office is obviously sterilized things. We have two different kinds of autoclave before things are. So with that being said, I refuse to have my my staff members. I don't refuse. Ah!